It is a story of a dry grassland of peninsular India, where the larks live in a unique wide range of open country. They are found throughout central India in various habitat. But most of the lark species live in grassland. Sykes lark is a species of lark found in a dry open habitat, including grasslands. It is mainly restricted to peninsular India. Lark species are birds of grassland and thorny scrub forest. Sykes larks are omnivorous. They forage on the ground and eat seeds, grass, leaves and buds, especially during winter when insects are less available. Sykes lark are very alert while foraging. They spend most of their time in digging the ground, which means they have less time to look out for predators, so they survive in small flocks. As an insectivorous, larks control insect population throughout their range. In the same habitat, you are watching a bird on the top of the bush called the Indian bush lark, marking its territory with this clear whistled music, which is the unmistakable anthem of the grasslands. Bushlark generally feeds on grains and seeds. The shape of its bill is adapted to its diet and feeding techniques. dull brown color allows them to blend in with the ground and makes it more difficult for predators to spot them. They will often avoid patches of ground which do not match with their coloration. Now it's time to bath in warm mud which is called mud bath. It is a maintenance behavior necessary to clean their feathers which is as similar as bathing in water. On the other side, the ashy-crowned sparrow larks are found in plains with bare ground, grass and scrub. The males are well-marked contrasting black and white face pattern while the females are sandy brown. These larks are found in pairs or small flocks. They forage on the ground for seeds and insects.
When disturbed, they crouch on the ground or sometimes run away. Now we can see one more lark species found in the same habitat, Rufus tail lark. They're not very secretive like other larks, so they're usually seen on the ground and sometimes perching on wires. The species is found mainly in lowland altitude dry regions. They walk on the ground making quick dashes to capture insects. The tendency of dust bath of larks fluctuates according to the time of the day, which suggests some type of nature clock. Dust bathing may be a way of expression on the ground to mark an individual's territory. Larks are omnivores. They spend most of their time looking for food. Sometimes, eating too quickly may result in choking. Sykes larks are energetic and charismatic birds. They are particularly known for their skill of mimicking different birds like red rattled lapwing, black drongo, green bee eater and many more, creating an impression that all these birds are present here. Most singing comes from male Sykes larks during mating season. They use aerial song and display to attract female larks and defend their territories. Throughout this display, males sing fragments of the characteristic songs and sometimes offer small pieces of food in order to extend courtship. Here, the male Sykes lark approaches with some food in order to impress the female. The female, on the other hand, is busy in her foraging and ignores him. He comes again with the same intention. The female is seen nowhere. Instead, a competitor appears. This time, he goes again to collect some more food.
This process goes on till the female accepts. This behavior is all part of courtship and pair bonding. The more the food, the more the chances of pairing. Nearby, on the tip of a thorny bush, there is a female Indian bushlark watching territorial fight between two male Indian bushlarks. By standing on a height, the winner male declares his territory as well as rights on the female. This results in a pair. Here, the male ashy crown sparrow lark approaches the female for mating, and he finally gets the chance. After a successful copulation, female starts searching an appropriate place for her nest. She selects a nest site on bare ground. She either chooses a natural depression in which the nest is to be built or excavates a site herself. To dig a cavity, she uses her bill to loosen the soil. Sometimes also kicks out the dirt with her feet. The nest is a compact depression under a tuft of grass in the ground, lined with some pebbles and grass arranged on the edge. Usually, larks build their nest in the direction between east to west. Ashy crowned sparrow lark's female is an expert nest builder. She builds her nest in an eastern direction with the help of a small bush, which helps protection from sun, wind, and rain. Here, 
she uses a fast growing plant of wild osimum or rantulas which will protect her nest. The bush also helps to protect the eggs from predators. Like other larks, Indian bush lark also builds its own nest. The female collects the nesting material. She chooses the areas of short, sparse vegetation and avoids places where grass grows more than a couple of inches high for nesting. Usually, females build their nests alone, without any help from their mates. And this behavior is usually found in most larks. During this breeding season, other native birds also share the same habitat for nesting. After two days of preparing the nest site, the female ashy crowned sparrow lark lays two eggs on the third day. She begins to incubate, sit on to warm them. and females share incubation responsibilities but the female typically spends more time on the nest than the male. However, the female will sometimes leave the nest for foraging herself. This time, Sykes Lark is not wandering for food. Surprisingly, there is a nest. She lays a single egg, which is to be constantly incubated and protected from predators.
before approaching the nest, female Indian bush lark observes it from a distance and when she ensures above the safety, she moves towards it. She lays two eggs and starts to incubate them until they hatch. After 13 days of incubation, ashy crowned sparrow lark's chicks start hatching. As soon as the eggs are hatched, the female throws away the eggshells in order to prevent the nestling from ants and keep the nest hygienic. Time for the newborn to have its first food. However, both males and females feed and care for the chicks. Here, the adult parent Indian bush larks are taking care of their nestlings in the same manner. Nearby, some cattle grazing activity takes place, bothering the Sykes lark. Realizing the oncoming threat, the Sykes lark still feeds the nestlings.
as the distance reduces, the incubating female flushes silently, having no clue to the predator. When the herd approaches nearer, the scared sykes lark finally flies away. As the time passes, the plant that supported the nest grows and simultaneously the chicks are also grown up. Even though the chicks are grown, they constantly need to be fed and hence the job of feeding is still carried out by their parents. They take a lot of effort to fetch sufficient quantity of food for their growing chicks. The life cycle carries on till the chicks are fully grown to manage their own needs. There are different types of anthropogenic pressures which reduce the area of grasslands and change the grasslands ecosystem. Larks that depend on grasslands have to struggle with a number of introduced grazing animals. As a result, the Sykes lark nest survives no more. Many nests get destroyed due to construction and expansion of human encroachment. Ashy Crown Sparrow Lark's nest is one of them. There are many roads connecting many cities and these roads are busy with heavy traffic and rash driving which result in many accidents and road kills. One of such accidents occurred while the female Indian bush lark was crossing the road with feeding material for nestling. This is how many larks get killed every year. In general, among ground nesting species, up to 40% of lark nests are lost due to human interference. The dry grassland is a home of many endangered and endemic birds and wildlife. It is unfortunate that the importance of the dry grasslands has not yet been appreciated. As a result, many grassland bird species like bustard and florican are on the verge of extinction. So dry grasslands need to be protected. We can only hope for the better future of nature.